Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to be discussing the VNC protocol. So this is the virtual network connection protocol and it's for sharing um, desktops over a network. So instead of just using the keyboard monitor like you're sitting there, you're using the network to control another keyboard monitor. So we're going to touch a little bit on clients, servers, and things of that nature throughout the video as well as how to do it on Linux and how to do it on Windows and a lot of this crosses over to the BSDs as well. Now finally though then um, we're also going to talk about how do you access your VNC server over the internet so we're going to touch on how you configure that as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we have a Windows 10 installation here this is just Windows 10 Home, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And all we're going to do is open up Microsoft uh, Edge here. Alright, now we're going to go to tightvnc.com. <clears throat> now this is a client as well as a server. And um, even if the website changes in the future, all you got to do is click download now in this case and we want to download for Windows 64-bit and if you need 32 um, you can download that as well but we just want to go ahead and download the installer for that and let that finish so once that is finished we're gonna go ahead and install that alright now that that's downloaded let's just go to our downloads and we're gonna go in there and go ahead and double click um, it's a very straightforward setup. Um, basically, we're just going to go through this wizard here, and I'm going to explain some of the steps. Um, agree to the license, hit next. I'm going to do a complete installation. The reason being is I want to have the server part of TypeBNC, as well as the client. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do here. So let's keep all these the defaults, and we're going to hit next. And install that and go ahead and click sorry about that and go ahead and click yes to that okay so the the two main passwords this is talking about is the password for remote access first of all this password isn't the same thing as encryption okay what this password is part of is the authentication to this particular server so this just says if your VNC client it can be any any program that speaks VNC by the way because it's an open standard protocol but anyway that is saying you're authorized to connect this protocol is not encrypted though so there's other things you can do but remember this is just authentication so we're just gonna type a password here the same one twice and the administrative password is you don't need this um, particularly but I would recommend it this prevents anyone that connects over VNC from being able to make changes to the type VNC server settings alright things like access control lists you may have put in and other things like that so do make sure though that you have the password uh, separate there and then we're gonna hit OK and finish alright so after that in your taskbar you'll see VNC is running and you'll see the IP address so what we need to do is actually set a static IP address and we also need to double check anyway that VNC is allowed through the firewall so we're gonna check and make sure that VNC is allowed real quick and by default it is but you always want to check because uh, it's a great troubleshooting step to make sure you're not making any uh, mistakes there alright it is allowed on private and public networks if you are having a problem make sure it's checked but um, that part of the configuration is fine now we're also going to go to network our network adapters and we're going to go to properties of in this case our ethernet connection you can do this on a Wi-Fi card though as well um, that doesn't affect how the server works so under IP settings we're gonna edit we're gonna set manual click IPv4 
and in my case I'm gonna do one nine two one six eight one two five four twenty four bit subnet mask and we're gonna do one nine two one six eight one one as our gateway and one nine two one sixty eight one one <coughs> as our preferred alright once that's saved we're all good so the reason you want it static is because if you want to connect and you're away and the IP has changed you that configuration will break and we'll, we'll, you'll see why that happens in a little bit but there's also other reasons like if you want to assign this a domain name in your network and things like that so from there though that's the main steps we have to do on our Windows 10 machine so what we've done is we set up a, a tight VNC server as a server and as well it can be a client alright so now we're gonna move over to Linux we're gonna set up tight VNC uh, VNC viewer rather on there and we're gonna connect, connect back to this Windows 10 machine so I'll see you in a second alright now we are on our Linux machine so the same essentials are gonna apply uh, we're going to go ahead and put check connectivity. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and install VNC Viewer. Now VNC Viewer is essentially going to make um, this machine a server. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's actually uh, X. Tight VNC viewer. All right, we're gonna get that installed. All right, and when you get that installed, the VNC viewer command uh, <coughs> is what you use to run that. Now we're also going to install. Now that was the client that first package this uh, package is for the server so type VNC server and this is if you want this machines desktop or any applications as you'll see in a second to be shared over a network we're only focusing on a client at the moment but um, that's what we're doing with this so both of those packages are installed and just like before you do want to make sure it's allowed in your firewall if, unless you've done anything special, most Linux distributions out of the box don't have any firewall rules in the input chain that would block anything, so we don't have to worry about allowing anything. All we're actually going to do is go and edit our connections. And real quick, just go to our IPv4 settings, click manual, and then I want to add in here. 192, 168, 1253 with a 24 mask. And we can add the gateway if we want to. We don't need to for now. Because remember, these uh, two PCs are on the same network right now. All right, so you do want to disconnect and reconnect to make sure the static IP takes effect. And as always, do make sure the IP address is on there properly. All right. And now we're going to use VNC Viewer and connect to our Windows machine. All right, so now to connect to the Windows machine, we're just going to open up a terminal, type VNC Viewer. And here we put the IP address of the server, 192.168.1.254. Remember that one we uh, specified. Now, what password do we put here? We put the one for desktop authentication when we were setting up type VNC. All right, so not the administrative password uh, for the locking of the configuration, the other one. All right, so from here, though, we can sign in. And there we go. So we are signed into the desktop. So from here, though, yes, we can control everything. So if I open this uh, tab here, and you see that it's open on our VNC session. If I go over to the Windows machine here, and then you can see the window is moving in both uh, machines. 
So this works both ways, but you can also have it view only. So if I close the window from the Windows machine, it closes on the BNC client that is getting a copy of the desktop over the network. All right, so that's the purpose of VNC, and it does work on Linux and Windows, both as a client and server. So from here, we're going to go back to Windows and connect into Linux to show you the difference. All right, so now we're back actually on Linux. I misspoke. So we need to start up the server, and we're going to start start that with Type VNC Server. Now, this is the same thing as Type VNC on Windows. It's asking us, what's that authorization password you want them to have to type? All right, so again, you won't be able to see it here, but make sure you type it correctly. Now, we don't need a view-only password. Again, that means you have no control during the VNC session, um, but that could be useful in some scenarios, but we don't need one here. So, very important, and this can be a little bit confusing at first, the VNC server on Linux has configuration in your home directory under .vnc here, and you have the log, you have your password file, and your X startup file. The X startup file is very flexible, and uh, it can tell VNC server what to start when a VNC client connects to it. So we could start, for instance, just Firefox as an application, or just um, like a window manager like Rat Poison or Fluxbox. So what I'm going to show you here is I've actually installed Fluxbox, and it's in user bin Fluxbox. So what I want to do is open up that X startup file, and instead of this configuration in here, all I'm actually going to put in this file is... Uh, user bin fluxbox and save that file so let's make sure that's in there and it is now if you want to restart the service do sudo uh, kill all x uh, type bnc and make sure it's not there anymore and now we're going to rerun the server all right you see it's using that file we just changed so now what we want to do is go back on the Windows machine and point type VNC viewer to 192.168.1.253 if you're following along with the IPs and everything. And from there, what I'm sorry, what you want to actually do is look at the port as well because it's a non-standard. It's actually let me see if I can scroll up here. It's actually 5901 in this case where Windows was 5900. So we're going to go back to Windows, uh, do all that, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so now from Windows here, we're going to open up the Type VNC Viewer. And what we want to type here is the IP address of Linux, remember. So that's 192.168.1.253 in my case. And this is going to be a full socket address, so you have to do a colon, and you have to put in the IP address, the, the port number, rather. So we're going to do 5901, and that's the port number of the VNC server on Linux. So then once we hit connect, password we put in when we started the server. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. And now we're connected. But what is this? This is Fluxbox, another window manager that I installed off camera. So from here, we can do the same thing. Um, we can control everything, we can start up applications, and anything graphically that this can output to a monitor and take input from, it can be done over VNC, we're just not physically there. So um, everything works as you see, and the same concept applies. If I am over here in the machine I'm connected to, I actually don't even see uh, this session because I didn't connect to that. So that's the really cool thing about Linux, is you can get custom with the applications that get started. You don't necessarily have to connect to uh, an application that's been running. You can actually launch any application on Linux and let it uh, be accessible. So you can connect to the existing session here as well. You just have to edit the X startup file and point to that. But uh, that's how you do it on uh, Linux and how you connect in. Alright, so now we're back on our Linux machine and what we've done 
is separated the two machines on two separate networks. So now this is on a completely separate IP subnet of our Windows machine. So what can we do now? Well, let's try uh, right out of the gate VNC Viewer, and we're going to try to connect to that the WAN address of what is now the uh, the network that the Windows machine is in. This would be like now this Linux machine is in like a coffee shop somewhere, or you know any other place you can think of, but it's not on the same network as our server we want to connect to. So no surprise, it says connection refused. So you know there we go. It's not allowing that traffic through. So what we have to do is go into our Wi-Fi router and make a port forward to allow the traffic to get from the WAN to the VNC server. So let's go back over to our Windows machine. All right, we're back on our Windows machine, and let's check IP config. So now you can see though they are on a separate network. It's a completely separate network ID. So our gateway is 192.168.1.1. So what we want to end up doing is opening up our web browser, and we're going to go in to that interface, and let's go ahead and log in. All right, this is just open uh, open WRT, uh, running in a different way, but essentially um, this is very similar to any Wi-Fi router you already have from watching this video, I would think. So all we have to do to make the port forward uh, operate is go to network, in this case firewall under there, and most importantly the two words you want to look for in your Wi-Fi router is port forwards or port forwarding. So once we go there, we just want to add a rule and we're just going to call this VNC from WAN. And in my case, you just want to say TCP should be forwarded. Um, it won't hurt to forward both of them, but uh, it's not necessary to do that. The external port should be the should be 5900. If you're doing something different where you have multiple clients running VNC servers, you can change the external port on the outside to go to a different IP address but the same port on the inside. So on the inside, they're all using 5900, but because the external port can be different on the outside, you could go to different IP addresses, or different VNC servers. Um, that's not as common. You don't necessarily have to do that. But if you do, that's what you need to do. So we're going to say 5900 for our external. The source zone should be the WAN. The destination is the LAN. For internal, we're just going to pick our Windows desktop. That's why we had to set a static IP because we don't want this changing once we put this port forward in because then it will fail to work. 5900 is that port number for the internal. This means the port on that machine, on that IP address. Now we're going to save and apply. And once that applies, we are going to go, all right, we're going to come back over here. And let's go back over to the uh, Linux machine. If we open up VNC Viewer, we can go ahead and type the WAN IP of our Wi-Fi router. And, you know, you obviously know this can be PFSense, it can be OpenBSD, it can be whatever you want. Uh, but just make a port forward, essentially. Now, though, we have a password prompt. And remember, this password prompt is coming from the server that's sitting behind the router. Because that port forward just rewrote the traffic, to go to the IP address of our VNC server. So we're going to type that password from uh, in the beginning. And now we are logged into our Windows machine over VNC. If we scroll down, and there's our Windows machine. Interestingly though, we can see, you know, exactly what you know is on the Windows machine. And again, it's stuck here. Let me just relaunch that real quick. All right, so again, um, this is what we were accessing on there is just this machine. And as before, we can see if I exit out of
if I exit out of here and I go back over to the Windows machine now that is closed but if I open up this and go back over to Linux now this is open and I can uh, move it around and control it and everything by going to this folder come back over to Windows there we are so that's how to do it over to the internet when you're not in the office or at home um, one last thing there's two ways to encrypt VNC the most straightforward and easiest way I think is a VPN server like OpenVPN you would just put that on your edge router or firewall or on a server behind that router or firewall and then you could connect to that and then from the VMP, VPN server you can then connect to type VNC whatever server you have on your network but between the WAN to your to the uh, what to your network and then over all the other WAN networks in the middle that you may be going through that would be encrypted so the only place it would be unencrypted is when it goes from your Wi-Fi router to the actual server on your LAN alright so that's one way to do it you could also SSH tunnel it with the dash L option the local port binding and that way you can achieve encryption with VNC but uh, with that though that's how we do this on Windows and Linux and you know as I said a lot of that applies to the BSD as well if you want to use that but with all that I do hope you found it enjoyable um, I do appreciate you for watching and have a very nice day and of course as always it's been Tyler with T-Tech